and welcome to the Belmont Journal, your source for hyperlocal news and community updates. I'm Mike Crowley, your host this week. The novel coronavirus outbreak, also called COVID-19, is an emerging and rapidly evolving situation. The town of Belmont's actively monitoring the situation. The Belmont Health Department is following guidance from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health and the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. To get the most up-to-date information, please check the town's website. Also, the Belmont Emergency Management Agency's blog for local information. And also, you can check cdc.gov coronavirus for situation updates and what you should know. We have a video from the CDC. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Butler, Deputy Director for Infectious Diseases at CDC. I'd like to talk to you about the new virus that causes the disease COVID-19. Older adults and people who have severe chronic medical conditions like heart, lung, or kidney disease, or diabetes may be at higher risk for severe illness from COVID-19. If you are one of the people at increased risk for serious COVID-19 illness, it's especially important for you to take action to reduce the risk of getting COVID-19 now. The first thing you can do is take care of your own health. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol if soap and water are not available. Cover your coughs or sneezes with a tissue or cough or sneeze into your elbow, not your hands. Avoid contact with people who are sick. Clean and disinfect surfaces in your home, such as counters, tabletops, and doorknobs to remove germs. Use household cleaning sprays or wipes according to the label instructions. The next thing you can do is make a plan for what to do if you do get sick. Know who will take care of you if your caregiver gets sick. Talk to your health care provider about getting extra necessary medications to have on hand. Get enough supplies, too, including enough household items and groceries so you can stay home for a few weeks if you have to. The third thing you can do is pay attention to what's happening locally. If COVID-19 is spreading in your community, stay home as much as possible and avoid crowds. If you get sick with fever, cough, or shortness of breath, Call your health care provider. If you develop warning signs, such as difficulty breathing, persistent pain or pressure in your chest, confusion, or blueness of the lips or face, these may be signs of serious illness. Call 911. For more information and the latest resources, please visit cdc.gov COVID-19 or call 1-800-CDC-INFO. That's 1-800-232-4636. I'd like to welcome our weekly guest, Franklin Tucker, to our segment, This Week in the Belmontonian. How are you, Franklin? Uh, fine. Thank you very much for having me. So, coronavirus, what's it's, the situation? Well, uh, Belmont has its first case, per, per, presumptive it's case. It's a presumptive case. Uh, of a person who uh, actually attended the uh, Biogen conference, which mm -hmm. is right now ground zero for the spread of the coronavirus in Massachusetts. Um, uh, that person is now in isolation within their home. Um, and, along with and family members? Along with uh, family members. Uh, they, that person is a parent and his two children, their two children, um, are, uh, go to the uh, high school and to the Chenery. So uh, when that came out, uh, the, the, the school district um, uh, reinforced what it it's said before, and that's how it's uh, disinfecting the schools every yeah. day, uh, especially um, once a day uh, for uh, the six schools, uh, sure. each having a um, uh, the industrial uh, cleaning. So that's a, a good thing. Um, even though that's happened, um, Parents are taking their kids out of school, not a whole lot, but you know, but some, are. some are. Uh, so right now, uh, the biggest effect that uh, this had is, um, is the policy from the school district uh, canceling any kind of large public gathering. And that has affected the, um, uh, uh, the school musical. Shrek, Shrek the, the, the musical. musical. 
And uh, people may not realize, but this is a very expensive um, venture for the schools. It's like it can go from anywhere between uh, twenty to thirty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars, and it's also a big fundraiser for for uh, the uh, um, the performing arts com uh, committee. So it, it's something that. Um, um, is uh, affecting the town. We're seeing other things happening also. Lectures being uh, uh, canceled, field trips, um, uh, the large um, foundation for Belmont Education um, uh, Spring Festival, um, gala I should say. And, and the town selectmen are talking at their, their next meeting on, on the 16th about you know remote participation in, in uh, that's Se select board and potentially other town meet uh, and, town that, and that's because uh, we have uh, we have yet to hear uh, what the policies of the, of the town and the school is going to be about closing schools uh -huh. you know if there's any kind of uh, reason they would want to do that I mean it, they are in discussion right now uh, we don't know if any kind of town meetings or town uh, committee meetings are going to be uh, canceled um, so we're gonna have to wait for a lot of these for the next couple of weeks okay and, and in the meantime this also is likely to have a potential impact on businesses in the town think of all the small businesses we have we have a, uh, a small movie theater that really need you know that a lot of people come in you know three mm -hmm. or four times a night that's going to be affected restaurants um, uh, small stores um, do you, um, um, it's just uh, it's going to affect not only the businesses but employment also all right, Franklin, I believe we also have an update on vocational technical education. Yes, um, as you know, we are no longer part of the Minuteman District, which was, and, which we had been in. At the end of June. At the end of June. Um, and, uh, but that doesn't mean that, that uh, students aren't looking for a vocational education. About 30 eighth graders have decided that they would like that. So now, um, because there is no room at the Minuteman. And, and that's the big surprise is that there, you know, that's right. We were told by uh, promoters of uh, pe uh, people who supported uh, not becoming a member. They said, "Oh, there will always be, there, sp there will spaces, always be, be spaces, spaces there, but none." <laughs> so, so now we're scrambling, and now the district is scrambling with uh, a number of communities to try to find slots for our kids, and oh. uh, like Medford and, and Cambridge and, and Newton. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, and we'll talk with you next time. Thank you. Recently, a new day spa opened in Belmont. It's the Valentina Day Spa on Concord Avenue. Cherise Sarunian went to the grand opening and has the story. My name is Armine Manukyan Humphrey, and uh, I'm a co-owner of Valentina Day Spa here in Belmont. Uh, hi, I'm Narin Kuregian. I am a co-owner too with my sister. We are excited to start in Belmont uh, because I have a long history with, uh, with the town of Belmont. I actually, for the last 15-17 uh, years, I've been teaching and then uh, running an Armenian school which started in Belmont Center. I'm a former doctor, dermatologist, so I moved from, I originally am from Armenia. So I, when I graduated Armenian Medical University, I moved in Russia. I always want to have my own, you know, uh, own uh, salon, you know, because I saw that I can do more. We kind of work as a team, because uh, my expertise in uh, business operations and her, ex her expertise as in tr treatments, I think it complements well. And we always got along, and uh, we are very uh, tight family so we always help each other and I think it shows on our daily uh, operations and on a daily yes. basis. The name Valentina Day Spa, uh, we were going through a lot of names, lot of names yes. yes and we decided to um, kind of combine both our names Armine and Naine to come up with something exotic interesting out of box and then our daughters mentioned that said how about uh, grandma's name Valentina we kind of convinced her to come to drop by to see the place and then we showed the sign on and the she door was mm -hmm. she was so emotional and crying and she was very touched we are located on 93 Concord F uh, Belmont uh, in the building so in the building of uh, Sons of Italy so it's uh, just uh, right uh, uh, next to next the to uh, high, school. high school. And we also want to thank our uh, devoted, um, loyal customers as well. And thank you everyone for coming to our grand opening. We appreciate the turnout. It was wonderful.
Joanna Jubilis, senior multimedia journalist with the Citizen Herald, is with us again this week to talk about the local news in This Week in the Citizen Herald. Welcome back, Joanna. Great to be here, Mike. So let's talk about the Community Preservation Act projects mm -hmm. that yes. uh, will soon be for They'll yes. soon be, be before town meeting. There are four of them, uh -huh. totaling about 1.1 million. Okay. And I'll start with the one that I think is a pretty important one, feasibility study for Belmont Village, about $173,000. Okay. Okay. And this is an affordable housing issue, right? Yes, so that what they're going to do is they're going to do a study that will look at how they can add more senior housing, more one-bedroom, mm -hmm. handicap-accessible units to that property, which is nine acres of property. And th there's a large parking lot that could potentially be exactly. built on Exactly, exactly. And this is related to Sherman Gardens, which um, is about 80 affordable senior housing units. None okay. of them are ADA accessible. And there was a study done two years ago to look at that property. And what the architect and the developer, has, have, they've come up with four scenarios mm -hmm. for that. And one of the, the best scenarios is actually to add more senior housing to Belmont Village. So this that, that's, story, that's interesting. Right. And then redeveloped Sherman Gardens as, as more affordable housing, but not necessarily just for seniors. Okay. The big thing is there are no ADA accessible senior housing units um, at Sherman Gardens or Belmont Village. And and little in the way little or no in the way of one bedroom units. Right. They uh, knew they do need more one bedroom and even but then they also do they want to look at maybe adding more two and three bedroom that are ADA accessible. Okay. So that's uh, a good project. How about the Homer House? Well, the Homer House, um, they want to restore 43, the, all 43 windows and of the property. This is the big historic house that sits up on the hill in, yes. um, um, in town, near town center, um, overlooking the town Pleasant. hall. Yes, it's where Winslow Homer, the famous artist, painted many of his famous works of art. With right windows in and much better repair at the time. Yes. So that's for a hundred thousand, and mm -hmm. they're hoping that if they can restore the windows, it'll it'll you know maybe increase public access to the property, which is what they you know what they really want to do. They really want the town to use it more, but they need to make sure that the windows are safe. And, and also repairing the windows apparently will drastically cut down on the heating bill, which exactly. is substantial, right? Because of the draft. Another great project coming that will be coming before town meeting for funding, CPA funding, is the Townfield Playground, okay. which is about six hundred eighty thousand dollars to construct a brand new playground. And and it's more than just a playground, right? Right, pickleball courts, basketball court, a, a toddler playground, mm -hmm. and also parkour for seniors, which is great because it's located right near the Beach Street Center. Right. So that's another great part. That's the highest price tag okay. project. The other project is to replace the chimneys at Town Hall for 125000 This is actually an interesting thing because apparently Steve Dorrance, um, our facilities director, um, was just walking around yes. and noticed that something was slightly out of alignment with the chimney. Right, and bricks could fall and hurt people. Because That's it's right think. above a doorway. Right, so they need to fix the cracks, realign the bricks, and that's that's about 125,000 to do that. Again, it's it's all about maintaining these older properties. Okay, so we'll see all these projects most likely before town meeting. Yes. Um, I think the select board has to vote on them first. Yes. Okay. Well, We'll talk to you next time, Joanna. Thank you. All right. And now it's time for sports with Chet's scoreboard. This report is all about tournament action. Belmont Boys Basketball met Latin Academy in the semifinals. With 31 seconds to go, Belmont leading by one, Tim Manikazi sank two free throws. Mac Annis followed with two due to a technical foul against Latin. The violation also gave Belmont the ball at half court. Preston Jackson Stevens was fouled on the inbound play and made a free throw. Latin rebound his second free throw, but Jackson Stevens stole the ball at half court and made the basket. Belmont, now up by eight, prevailed 72-64 to and moved to the division finals. With superior shooting, Beverly led by 11 points after one quarter. The Marauders, never closer than 10, ended up on the short end of the final score, 76-59. to 
Turning to girls ice hockey, the Marauders defeated Waltham 2-zip with goals by Emma O'Donovan. With superior skating skills of recruited players at Austin Prep, the Marauders fell 3-0 in the quarterfinals. Now to boys ice hockey. In the Division I North semifinal, Belmont played Reading, a team that defeated Belmont twice during the regular season. Belmont scored first. Then Reading comes back to tie it. Belmont keeps pressing and ends up going up 2-1. to one. With one minute and 19 seconds to go, Belmont scores again and goes up 3-1. to one. Redding removes its goalie and is replaced by an offensive player. This leads to a goal and cuts Belmont's lead to 3-2. to two. On the faceoff, Redding takes additional shots on goal. In the wild scramble in front of the net, the Belmont goalie saves the victory for Belmont. St. John's Prep is the competition in the Division I North Finals. The Eagles scored first near the end of the opening period. In the second stanza, Belmont scored to tie the game. St. John scored in the third for a 2-1 lead, followed by a Belmont score and a tie game. With less than a minute to go, Belmont scored for a 3-2 lead, which turned out to be the final score. The three Belmont co-captains and coach accepted and hold the trophy emblematic of the Division I North Championship. The Marauders are scheduled to play Walpole, the Division I South Champs, for the state title at TD Garden on Sunday. Shrek the Musical appears to be canceled as a precaution due to coronavirus, but the Belmont High School Performing Arts Company has been working intensively on it. Joanna Jubilis has been to the rehearsals and brings us a story about the musical. Shrek has been a show that I have always been very excited about because of how fun I think the music is. Obviously, people who know the movie know that it's a really fun story. It's a good fairy tale. It's got a positive, nice message, but I think the music is also what makes the show really special because there's fun opportunity for singing, for dancing. The band has some terrific songs that they get to play. a lot of different wow. makeup application. Mm -hmm. Many of the characters, so like Those Donkey, for example, right. keeps makeup on as Donkey the entire show. However, all the fairy tale creatures um, have other parts in the play as well. So they have one big number where they're being a pig or a wolf or a bear, and then another number, I don't know, 10 minutes later? Where they come <laughs> in as a, a different character, and then they have to come back at the end of the show again as the uh, as those same fairy tale characters. So they have to, we had to get a kind of makeup that washes off uh, cleanly and quickly. It's just a really fun show and it deals with problems of accepting oneself. I mean, Fiona as a character who, who hides her almost second identity because she's so scared of being judged when in reality, in the end, it's what makes her beautiful. And I think that's something that everyone should, I mean, everyone should know that every part of you is beautiful. <laughs> um, but it, it's just one of those like feel good shows where you come out and you, you had a good laugh, you <laughs> had a good uh, learning moment, and you can go home and just feel really happy. This is our story. are no longer just places to borrow books, and this includes Belmont's library. Thanks to the strong support of the Friends of the Belmont Public Library, the community today can enjoy a wide variety of enrichment programs at our library. Belmont Journal volunteer Kamako Akai Whitelaw reports on a recent cross-cultural concert at the library, 
which was a trio headed by a Belmont resident performing the traditional Turkish music inspired by Argentine tango, Viennese waltz, and Balkan Serto. The event was also partially co-sponsored by the Belmont Cultural Council. <music> do uh, at this point have an incredibly diverse uh, offering of programming. That's something that, uh, you know, just in the last uh, 10 to 20 years has become a really huge part of library services. Um, uh, the Music on Saturday series is sponsored by the Friends of the Library, who really have been the library's partner for almost 50 years, I think. Um, Vulcan F.A. is uh, not only a Belmont resident, but um, an incredible Turkish musician. Uh, and he's come with two other women to perform um, what they call uh, East Meets West, East Meets West. And it's um, Turkish music that's been inspired by uh, Western music. I'm a Belmont resident for the last four years <laughs> and a regular user of the library here, especially the kids' room, as I have two young boys and they spend a lot of time there. And here in this room too, in the assembly room, I attended many events organized by the Friends of the Belmont Public Library. And today I'm so happy to be in at this stage and I have this opportunity to present some Turkish music. Uh, in addition to music on Saturdays, the Friends of the Library also uh, sponsor our Arthla Talks, which we do um, year-round. You know, we at this point really are more than books. During the February break, the Belmont Religious Council organized a mission trip to Texas with local teens. David Webster, Belmont Journal citizen journalist, and a chaperone on the trip has the report. Hi, I'm Ariane and I'm from the First Church, um, Belmont Unitarian Universalist. And right now I'm here in Laredo, Texas with an interfaith youth group doing some work in conjunction with Habitat for Humanity. Kids have been absolutely fantastic. They're all learning how to use power tools and are very much empowered by that. I am Eric Weefall, pastor of Payson Park uh, from Belmont. So glad to be here with our service trip. Um, we're here in Laredo working for Habitat. We are helping a family have a place to live. And this is what we should be doing. We should be so proud of the kids uh, that we brought down here. I'm Charlotte from Plymouth Church, and I really liked how we've gotten to work hard and like work together, but we've also gotten time to like talk and get to know each other. Hi, I'm Andrew. Um, I'm also from Bethel Temple Center, and um, the reason I'm here is because like I heard really great things about it, and um, so far it's been a success. We've been really been able to you know work hard today and give back to. Uh, the people here. Hello there. I'm Leander from the First Unitarian Universalist Church in Belmont. We are currently building a home in Laredo for a family and currently we are working specifically on a shed in their backyard. And it's really exciting to use all the cool power tools and just know that you're doing something for another family and giving them joy. We're grateful that you guys uh, had come down here to help us out. You could be doing other things, but you decided to come down here to this uh, small town in South Texas. It's been a wonderful opportunity to come together as a community with the different houses of worship in Belmont, um, as well as helping out here. We've seen some incredible things and met some incredible people here in Laredo. We see where immigrants line up each day or even detain. We've been right on the banks of the Rio Grande River and see where people swim or try to cross. So altogether, it's a wonderful experience 
in community and cooperation with the kids coming together, kids from different houses of worship, sharing their knowledge, sharing their spirit, sharing their enthusiasm and hard work for a great cause. We finish our show with a programming update for your Belmont Media Center channels. Be sure to check them out. And if you have any Belmont news or updates to share, or if you'd like to volunteer, please let us know. You can contact Frederic Rigolo at fred at belmontmedia.org. Well, that's all for this week. I'm Mike Crowley, and thanks for watching the Belmont Journal. Stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.